there you have it, folks. My licorice is alive with the great tort song classic, I Cover the Waterfront. Uh, that was written by Johnny Green and Edward Heyman, and it is truly a tort song classic. Undoubtedly, Billie Holiday is probably the most iconic of all the recordings of that tune. But today, you heard me live against the pre-recorded tracks of my album, First Point, uh, which features the late Andy Weiner on the piano. Andy did all the arrangements, and without him, uh, keeping my inexperienced ass afloat with John Nagurney, my wingman and former teacher on the vibes, we could never have done this album. And trading fours on the drums is uh, the wonderful Billy Paul, who fortunately is still going strong, and I love that guy. And I just wanted to do a version off my album as a tribute to Andy Weiner. He was, you've probably seen him or heard him many times. He was the arranger and piano player for American Idol. But uh, sadly, I heard somewhat later than uh, my peers that Andy had uh, moved on to the other side. So rest in peace, Andy Weiner. And John, wherever you are, I hope you are hanging in there. Okay. Greetings, folks, from the Mau Mau. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's Maui. I'm here on a hill overlooking the north side of the island. I am not in my famous movie studio apartment in the land of La. Uh, no, I am here in the shadow of Haleakala, the volcano. And from where I sit, I can see the lights of Waialuku flickering in the distance. I am just a stone's throw also from this spot, from the monster surf break known as Piahi, or Jaws. And like all monsters, they need their sleep. And this time of year is when the Piahi beast is in hibernation. It's only come winter time when those malice-bearing swells out of the Kamchatka Peninsula come roaring in that Piahi shows its gaping, bloody killer smile. Anyway, I'm doing what I always do when I'm in the Mau Mau. I navigate the ever-changing matrix of swell and wind, and I hunt for surf. And this time of year, the prevailing energy is billowing out of the southern hemisphere, so I'm off to the opposite side of the aisle where the waves are. And this week, there have been very nice little rollers peeling in at a wind-protected little spot called Ukameami, otherwise known as a Thousand Peaks, because when this spot is firing, there are waves popping up everywhere. And it has been really great this week. The water is clear. The wind has been light. Conditions nearly perfect. Though one surfer uh, did see a man in a gray flannel suit. By that, I mean a sharp-looking dorsal fin splitting the waters about 100 yards from our lineup. None of us really seemed to mind, even though, truth be told, just a few weeks ago, an unlucky swimmer got chomped and was swiftly dispatched to the other side, wherever that is. Someone mentioned that the unfortunate swimmer was in a better place, but uh, frankly, I'd be hard-pressed to believe that there's a better place than right here on Earth, especially in the Mau Mau. <laughs> I'll need some Instagram or Facebook photos to make me believe otherwise. Actually, you know, for all the time I've spent in the water, I've never seen a shark surfing. I see them every day on land in Hollywood, but never on the water from my board. Now, I've seen a ton of them diving, I have to say, especially last year in Palau. And Palau is a small archipelago nation in the South Pacific near Micronesia. And uh, for those of you who are World War II historians, Palau is famous for the Marine Battle of Peleliu in World War II. And what for the Marines and the Japanese was hell on earth. For me and a collection of lucky divers, it was paradise. <laughs> It's funny how much prettier things get when you put away all that military hardware. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, sharks. In Palau, they were frigging everywhere, quietly patrolling the reef, waiting for their next meal, all of which got me thinking about the very nature of, well, nature. I mean, if a fish wakes up in the morning and says, gee whiz, my right fin is a little sore, I think I'll chill, hang off the school a little, you know, save my energy till that little, that pesky fin heals up, guess what? That fish is somebody's breakfast. That's the way nature works out in the big blue. They don't have hospitals or rehab facilities. There are no docks that offer fin replacement surgeries. No, 
The food chain is relentless and merciless. One mishap, your fault or not, and you're in it. Now, of course, we humans are masters of the universe. Uh, By and large, we are loving and intelligent creatures. We are forever contemplating our place in society, in the world, or the universe. But to some other hungry creature lurking in the depths, we're just another form of life sustaining calories and protein. That's the system. I didn't invent it, just trying to navigate it and have some watery fun in the Mau Mau. Anyway, as my week in the Mau Mau has progressed, a mighty southern swell has creeped in. In the last few days, the waves are bombing. Those 1,000 peaks are alive and showing, providing ample wave riding space for all manner of watercraft. Longboarders, shortboarders, stand-up paddlers, and now most notably a new species of wave riders has entered the water, foilers. Stand-up foilers and prone hand paddle foilers. Yep, folks, there is a new revolution in wave riding and it is exploding as we speak. Now, some decades back in our little surfing history, we had a material revolution. That's when the balsa boards were replaced by fiberglass, which was developed during World War II. Then there was the shortboard revolution when a whole generation of sliders, there was joy to be had with rippable seven-foot boards that rendered the long board (laughs) of yesteryear obsolete or seemingly obsolete. They made a comeback since. You can credit Aussie legend Nat Young and Jerry Lopez for that revolution. Then Laird and the Mau Mau boys started towing into outer reef behemoths. And more recently, there's the stand-up paddle revolution. And now, like it or not, folks, the foil revolution is on and it's happening here in the Mau Mau. Truth be told, the Mau Mau is ground zero for anything that is happening on the water. If you want to make it movies, what do you do? You move to Hollywood. You want to play jazz or do stand-up comedy, you go to New York, which I did, and uh, that's another story. You want to be an ace waterman, where do you go? You head to the Mau Mau. And right now, the newest, hottest thing on the water is foiling, stand-up foiling, Paddle surf foiling, kite surf foiling, wind surf foiling, downwind paddle foiling, whatever you could do on a board. Now all the watermen, the true watermen, the guys at the point of the spear, they're doing it on a foil. And what is a foil? A foil is like, well, it's like a wing with a tail. It sort of resembles a flying albatross in flight, except that the carbon fiber foil is suspended below the board by a keel, which, like I said, affixed to the bottom of the board. And when the appropriate energy is applied either by blade, paddle, hand paddle, wind or wave, and yes, (laughs) it's here, even uh, battery-powered propeller, which for 12 grand you can get, a battery-operated propeller-driven foil, whichever way you do it, the physics are the same. The foil lifts the board out of the water, And the fortunate rider is basically flying in a sort of frictionless free flow, covering more water over ground than any of us surface-bound wave riders dare imagine. And most impressive to me are the hand paddle foilers. It's glorious to watch and not so easy to master. And compared to those free-flying foilers, we gravity-bound paddle surfers, well, frankly, we look like something out of the late Jurassic period. We're outmoded. We're slow and probably bound for extinction or irrelevance or both. I mean, when I'm out there watching these guys, I feel like sort of like a lonely dinosaur after that asteroid hit. It's like, excuse me, uh, I'm a megalomoronodon, and I'm looking for another of my species to procreate with. Have you seen any around? (laughs) Nope, sorry. You're the last one. You're going to go extinct. Yeah. Watching the Mau Mau watermen and women on those foils gliding up and over those 1,000 peaks, all I could think about was how Jack London must have felt when he arrived at Waikiki in 1907 on his sailing sloop, the Snark, which he built in San Francisco uh, right around the time the earthquake hit, which was, let's see, in surf time, that's 50 years BG. Uh, BG stands for before Gidget. That's when Frederick Kohner wrote about his daughter Kathy's adventure at Malibu, and that became a novel and later a movie and then a TV series. 
and surfing exploded into American popular culture. But that's another story. Anyway, with a city by the bay in smoldering ruins, Jack London set sail on the snark and arrived in the Hawaiian Islands sometime in the summer of that year. It was on the deserted beaches of Waikiki, and if you can imagine, no hotels, no royal Hawaiian, just grass shacks and white sand that the master American celebrity author, that being Jack London, he was fortunate to witness and write about a passel of young beach boys who would gain mastery over wave riding on long wooden planks. Like Mark Twain before him and even Herman Melville before Twain, Jack London was so inspired by the spectacle that he witnessed and that he tried. He wrote about it in his great travel opus, The Cruise of the Snark. Check it out. It's a great read, especially the chapter devoted to surfing entitled The Royal Sport. It was that chapter, really, that gave surfing its first nudge into the American consciousness. So, watching those foilers glide over the water... Well, it makes old-fashioned surfing look quaint. It's physics-defying. And if surfing is and was a sport of the kings, I have to classify foiling as a godly endeavor indeed. And I I really got to try it. I know I'll fail. I'll get my ass kicked. But uh, if I could just maybe for a moment achieve that uh, free flow above the water, I think it'll be worth it. Uh, last night, uh, what was up? I just finished a sunset surf at Ukameyami, and I was hanging out with the bras on the beach. And for information, uh, I do not qualify as a bra. I am a Heoli, a Haoli, which means white dude or descendant of the colonialist race who stole the land, privatized the beaches, deposed the king, and turned the verdant jungles of these beautiful islands to sugar and pineapple plantations. And finally, with their guns, germs, and steel, performed an unwilling genocide on the local inhabitants. The bras are the surviving descendants of those poor unfortunates who were victimized by the colonialist white people. Otherwise, only other way, really, to become an official bra requires at least a decade or two of living on the island, so I don't think there's any possibility of me ever becoming a bra, no matter how hard I try or wish it or want it, whatever. I can only be what I am. Okay, where was I? Oh, yeah. Anyway, I was hanging out with the bra crew at Ukameyami after scoring some righteous head-high longboard bombs, and... (laughs) <laughs> Out to the left of where I was surfing was a swarm of foilers buzzing around this one peak. And one kid, also a, a howly, on a prone paddle foil. I mean, the board was probably, I don't know, the size of a boogie board. I mean, it was frigging minuscule. He was flying around nonstop. By that, I mean his board never touched the water for like half an hour. And when the wave energy diminished, he just pumped that board and stayed airborne and glided out till the next set rolled in. Like an albatross skimming the waves, <laughs> he never touched down. Amazing, beautiful, and for me, a little bit humbling. The next day, I met the young man. His name is Kane, uh, to me, forever Citizen Kane. He's a high school senior, a strong legged, tow haired, strapping kid, and he's already designing his own foils and is planning to study engineering on some big university on the mainland, hopefully for his sake near the ocean. Anyway, he's amazing, and I'm sure with a few well-placed YouTube clicks, you can find him winging his way across the watery fringe of the Mau Mau. Another foiler to watch out for is Mickey Eskimo. He's he's not quite an 18-year-old. He's actually probably closer to 60. He's a native of Vienna, Austria. Uh, Mickey got his bra card decades ago, formerly a champion windsurfer. He's also an accomplished artist. And if you want to see him doing his thing, head out to Ukameyame. He's sure to be there skipping the light fantastic on his paddle foil. As for myself, yeah, I would like to try it. But for the time being, I'll just leash up my nine-foot fiberglass jalopy and enjoy the waves the way I can. Old school. Oh, well. Besides, a foil is running about two grand and change right now. So uh, there's a skill barrier to entry, but there's also a financial barrier to entry. Uh, The technology is new and the equipment is expensive. So that's my report here from the Mau Mau, me, myself, and the Mau Mau. What else? I watched 
or listen to the NBA Finals. The mighty Warriors finally met their match, undermanned by injury and exhausted by five straight runs into the Finals. The Steph strength in numbers gang finally ran out of numbers and succumbed to the fresher team, the Toronto Raptors. Sadly, Katie finally, well, actually, Katie finally made it back. And for one quarter of basketball, we could all see the plain spectacular truth. That man is Barishnikov with a basketball. Maybe not the best in the game, but easily the best in the game to watch. So much grace and skill and courage. And then in an instant, he was down. He crumpled to the floor like some racehorse at Santa Anita. Fortunately for KD, he is not a racehorse and will not be euthanized, nor is he a fish with a sore fin who will be quickly gobbled up by the next largest creature on the food chain. And even more fortunate for KD, uh, he was on a basketball court, not the Serengeti Plain or, like I said, the ocean somewhere, where he would indubitably be dispatched into the food chain. Instead, KD had a surgery, and hopefully we will be back on the court sometime next year with a brand-new contract, and probably with the Golden State Warriors, time will tell. Defeat and injury has a way of humbling all of us. So be it. Anyway, I wanted to thank you for hanging in for this missive across the sea. Tomorrow I'll be boarding the big bird and flying back to the land of law in my movie studio apartment. But uh, for the time being, I'm here overlooking Wailuku from Haiku near the sleeping monster hibernating till he shows his face in the winter that being Jaws or Piahi. So be it. Anyway, I wanted to extend a prayer to Andy Weiner, and sadly, well, just the way it is, life goes on with us or without us. So, from the Mau Mau, till next time, Adios, goodbye, and aloha. <laughs>